Hello again. Um, this video is about one of the German helmets I received during the week. It's this one. It's a German M40-52. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I need three helmets. I need an original M40, the M40-52, which is what this video is about, and the DIN pattern aluminium alloy fire brigade german helmet it'll all become apparent anyway so you think well what is an m40 slash 52 well surely an m40 helmet is an m40 helmet well that's not strictly true um what i suggest for the purpose of this video for the time being ignore that crest thing that's on the top of the helmet that's a reinforcing crest so we'll just talk about the the pattern of helmet for the time being and then we'll go into the other ones so you've got your world war ii german m40 helmet you know what an m40 is the the uh the grommet on the side is molded as part of the helmet stamping it's not an addition and the edge of the helmet is folded under, kind of reinforcing. That's an M40 helmet. Now, after the war, the Germans were looking for a new fire brigade helmet, come civil defence helmet, and they did use stocks of the original M40. Now, eventually, they modified the die of the M40 and brought out this one, the M40-52. Um, the M40-52 was a short production helmet which was in use from 1952 to the late 1950s and then the West Germans replaced that steel helmet with the DIN pattern aluminium alloy helmet which was a more acceptable um, fire brigade style helmet. We went, we went through that in its own video anyway. So what makes this an M40-52 and not an M40 steel helmet. Well, it has a vent grommet in the side, just like the M40. It's got liner rivets, just like the original M40. The lip of the shell is turned over, just like the M40. So what makes that an M4052? Well, because they're made on the same dies, you look on the inside of the shell to see if it's an M4052. Now on the M40, on the back, right there, you have the, the lot number stamped into the back. On the M40, 52 There's no lot number ignore this screw fix and we'll go into that in a minute. There's no lot number m4052 M40 there's a lot number because the m4052 was a short production run They didn't have a lot number in the back of them a production number as it were and another thing if we turn the helmets that away we go that away and right there like all World War II German helmets, it has the manufacturer's stamp and the size of the shell, NS64. Now this NS64 is Deutsche Nickel work, Schwerzer, which is a currently a 150 year old metal fabrication company which makes things out of nickel and nickel plated metal blocks and things like that. Now, to further confuse things, the post-war shell is also stamped NS64, which means it's made from a similar die. But if you look at the, the way that NS64 is stamped, that's the post-war stamp and it's stamped very, very poorly and also... The N is hardly legible. 
there's a different design six and the numbers are not quite in a straight line. Now, if we go to the World War II shell, the proper M40 shell, you can see the numbers are in a straight line and the more uniform. There's a different design six. So, so what determines the post-war shell are uh, different fonts and different spacings. The World War II stamping is much more tidier and uniform. The post-war stamping is much more untidy as it were. So that, although the two look the same, that one is a proper M40. That's an M40 slash 52. Now, there are two basic designs of M40 slash 52 shell. Ignore the crest on the top or the deflector. We'll get to that in a minute. The first models of the M40 52 are this model with or without the deflector. The first models have the vent grommet in the side. As it neared the end of the production run, the vent grommets were dispensed with. And so it's, it's just flat metal. There's no vent grommets in the later production ones. Uh, these helmets were made for the West German Fire Brigade, the West German Police and the Bundesgrenzschutz, which is a kind of pseudo military border guard type people. Now, when it's issued to the Fire Brigade, it has this deflector on the top, which is aluminium alloy. The helmet's steel, this deflector is aluminium or aluminium. It's there in case anything falls on the guy's head and it kind of it deflects it off. Um, how that's fitted to the helmet, there's three holes drilled in the helmet, back, top, top. The deflector has a hole in the back and it has a couple of lugs. The lugs push through the holes, the ends are splayed out, that holds it there. And you have on the back of that a nut assembly to hold it on. Now, when these are issued to a non-fire brigade unit, they don't have this on them. What they do have are three blanking plates over the holes. I'll show you on this, this other helmet that I got. Now, on this helmet, which will be the subject of another video, if that helmet had not got that fitted to it, it would have these metal blank plates over the holes so there's one there there's one there and there's one at the back now that one is where the screw post will be through there those two are where the holes would be on there now also the helmet was issued as a helmet without holes as well so you can find it with holes with holes that have been plugged, with a deflector, and without holes. And all of them have this, what looks like a World War II liner, but it actually isn't. And what determines that being not a World War II liner are those vent holes cut where the guy's forehead goes. Vent holes in a liner at the guy's forehead are not a feature of any World War II helmet liner. Show this M40. None on that one. Some on that one. World War II liner proper. Not a World War II liner. Also, the chin strap is not a World War II chin strap. It's permanently fitted by a rivet on either side so you can't actually remove it. World War II chin straps have a push button assembly going through it which means they can come off. There's nothing about the liner or anything in the liner that's World War II. It is leather but it's a composition 
band it's not a metal band inside it's cardboard come plastic and it has a buffer in the top of the head to protect the wearer's head from the splayed out rivets that hold the deflector to it um, this one has the size 56 in it and it also has a really nice ink stamp not of the manufacturer the ink stamp is of the fire brigade that was issued this particular helmet it says um freiwilliger firewehr merzig warden no it says freiwilliger fewer warden warden and it says Los Losbezik Badenbach. Now, basically, what it means is volunteer fire brigade of Waden, which is a city in Merzig. Uh, Waden is a district in northern Saarland, and the area of Badenbach is the district. So it's a volunteer fire brigade, city of Waden, district of Badenbach. And it also has written in ink. Badenbach, just to make sure it's their fire brigade helmet. And this one has the usual, although broken, three tabs on the back, which held a leather neck guard. So that's basically the difference of an M40 helmet and an M40 slash 52 pattern helmet. Now a lot of these do get sold as World War II shells, but they are not. So be wary of any M40 helmet that, that's offered on the market that has a hole in the back here, because that's where your fire brigade deflector shield was fitted. And also be aware that original M40s have a lot number stamped in the back. The short production run of the M4052 means no lot number. But you do get, because they're made on the World War II machines, you do get World War II type littering. NS64 in exactly the same place as you find them on your regular World War II German helmet. But you can see they're much smaller, different font, nice and tidy on the M40. M4052, they are slightly larger, much more out of alignment and a lot less better stamped. So that's with the aid of an original M40, the West German M4052, in this case, it's been a fire brigade issue because it has the deflector crest on the top. And it's in the correct colour as well because all of these early post-war West German fire brigade helmets were all painted black. So there's the M4052. This one has the vent grommets in. Then later in the production somewhere you have the M4052 which has no grommets in. And then this line is dropped when they accept the aluminium alloy DIN pattern steel helmet from the late 50s right the way through to possibly the 90s. So this has been the M40 52 pattern German helmet. Not a World War II German helmet, nothing World War II about it at all, but... They do quite often get sold as World War II steel helmets, which they're not. They're, they're, they're their own collector's item, as it were. Bye for now.